Hey everyone, how are we doing today? This is James Sweeney, aka Split Suit, and today we're going to review a hand sent in by Influx. This is a hand from 5 No Limit, where Influx has pocket jacks and has to make a big decision with second pair. So let's check it out. Okay, so in this hand we're in the big line with pocket jacks. There's a raise, there's a call, here decides to squeeze. Liking everything so far, size looks okay, we'll just go forward from here. We end up getting called by Crax, and Crax is a 17-9 over 130 hands. Now, over 130 hands, I'd really like to see things like 3-bet percentage, fold versus 3-bet. Yeah, there might not be a ton of samples of those things, but at least it's nice to be able to say, okay, this is someone who's maybe more likely to have 3-bet the original open with things like queens, jacks, tens, ace, king, or maybe you can use that number to say, eh, maybe not. That really, really helps when you're trying to develop not only the preflop range, but then, of course, figuring out what the heck they have his flop. Hero says that his own stats are 26-21. Always good to keep that kind of stuff in mind, but remember, your own HUD stats are important when your opponent is likely to be thinking about who you are, what your ranges look like, what HUD stats actually mean. If you're playing against players who aren't so great, eh, don't really worry so much about what your exact HUD stats are. And with that said, let's go to the flop. Now on the flop, we end up catching second pair, and in a situation like this, we decide to see bet, and this is pretty common for us to see bet in this kind of situation. So the big thing I ask myself here is like, am I going to see bet with things like ace king? If I was kind of messing around preflop, would I continuation bet here with ace five or ace nine, those kind of hands? And yeah, chances are I'm going to be see betting here a pretty large chunk of the time. Now I'm also looking at this kind of texture and saying, okay, this is the kind of texture where I think if my opponent has something like ace jack or those kind of hands that they're probably not going to fold for one street every single time. Now, it's only 130 hands. We can't confirm or deny that. But my general estimate is that people are going to float a lot more when they have position. And especially on just like a naked queen high board, I assume there's probably going to be a decent amount of floating in a situation like this. So what I'm really trying to prepare you for is when you see bet here, understand if it's just going to be one where you see bet your opponent folds a lot of the time. So who cares? Or is it going to be a spot where you see bet your opponent calls a lot of the time and thus you're going to have to make decisions on turn and rivers. And if you are going to have to do that, plan ahead head and make sure you kind of know what you're going to do in advance because not a lot of turn cards are going to change the texture a ton by the time it comes to the turn and a lot of the runoffs aren't going to change the texture a tremendous amount either. Sure, some will, but definitely not all of them. So I'm totally okay with the see that in this situation. End up getting called, go here, and here it decides to take the check, faces a bet, and then goes for the check call line. So I'm going to say a couple of things on this turn play, and I'm not going to go too far into should we be double barreling the turn or do we go for a check call or do we go for something else altogether. In a situation like this, what I'm going to say is a lot of players will go for check call. Now, when you go for check call, understand what you represent and understand are you doing that correctly. So a lot of players will go for check call when they have something like jacks, tens, or maybe like 10-9 that end up turning second pair, but they're not going to check call with things like e is queen x that sort of stuff for better or worse so be aware that some of the time when you take this line you could be turning your hand very very face up as like second pair that hates life but isn't going to go away for the first shell but probably goes away to a lot of second shells maybe not in this exact situation but overall make sure to keep that kind of stuff in mind in this exact situation, yes, I think that, again, making the assumption on the flop that there's going to be a decent amount of floating, that, yes, when we check, there's going to be a bet a large chunk of the time, and we should probably check call, because we beat things like, again, king tens, ace tens, ace jacks, all that kind of fun stuff. So it's a situation where I think I'm certainly good enough of the time to call this. Now, there are a couple of monster hands that cracks could have, right? They could have fours, deuces. They could have queen X, which crushes us. But I don't think there's going to be like aces or kings. I don't think there's going to be pocket queens. Pocket nine, sure, but only three combos. So who really cares? It's just one of those where there are definitely some strong hands in there, but I think there's enough nonsense to justify going for a check call, especially when you're getting three to one on the turn call as is. The thing is though, is the hand's not over. So we have to be thinking that step ahead. What is going to be our river play? Now, the issue here, issue, is that when we go to the river, if we decide to check and face a shove, which is very, very reasonable given how much money is left, we're getting a great price, right? So it's one of those situations where you have to be very, very clear on what is your plan. Now, here's my issue. Normally when I say, yes, you should check call the turn and probably prepare to check call a lot of rivers, that's normally my suggestion in situations like this. My issue in this spot 
is yes, I think that if Crax was floating the flop, he probably stabs the turn. 100% agree with that still. My issue, though, is I don't think that once you check call the turn, it tells him that he should continue firing that river with whatever ace high kind of hand he has or by turning eights into a bluff or anything like that. I think this is a situation where Crax is probably induced to bluff once, but I don't think you're going to get that bluff on the river enough of the time, which means that river betting range becomes very, very strong. So when you end up facing this kind of action... This is a sick spot that kind of sucks. You're getting about four to one and you don't have to be good all that often to justify making this call. But I don't think this is a bluff anywhere near enough of the time. The only hand we're really doing like great against is pocket tens. Everything else has us in dire straits. And then the question is, is this person bluffing enough? And I don't think there's going to be enough bluffs in this person's range. There's still a decent amount of queen X combos, not like heaps of them by any stretch, but there's still certainly enough. And there's a couple of nuttish combos like fours, deuces, and whatever. But primarily, I think this is a spot where I think all the bluffs are sucked out of this person's range. I think there were bluffs on the turn, but I don't think there's going to be bluffs here, right? It just doesn't make sense. It's not a big enough bet to be scary to generate enough folds from things like Jack's 10s or Queen X that was check calling the turn. I don't think this is a situation where Crax is bluffing enough, and thus I think that betting range on the river is far too strong and i think when you check call it you're unfortunately going to end up losing this pot a large chunk of the time now i don't make a lot of suggestions for check call the first one and then check fold the next one but there are certain times when maybe all the bluffs are just completely sucked out of a range or there just aren't anywhere near enough bluffs to justify continuing with that check call down approach so Influx, thank you very much for the great hand. If you or anyone else has a poker hand you'd like me to review in a video, feel free to send it to me directly at splitsuit.com send, and you can always ask me a poker question at splitsuit.com ask. If you enjoyed this video, please make sure to like and subscribe, and if you have any questions or thoughts on this hand, feel free to drop a comment. Otherwise, I'll see you back next week with a brand new video, and in the meantime, good luck out there, and happy grinding.